Welcome to Motivated to Lead Podcast, helping you become a better leader. I'm your host, Mark Quinnsign. Hi, everyone. Thanks again for joining us for our podcast this week. My name is Mark Klingsheim with SEMA Partners. Each week, we interview leaders and they share lessons learned from their careers. Our goal is to help you become a better leader. Uh, this is our 85th episode, and if you haven't done so, go back and listen to uh, our previous interviews, uh, some great thoughts that leaders share, and it's always something that we can apply uh, practically in our career and help us to become a better leader. Uh, this week, we're happy to have with us Donette Beverly. Donette uh, has 30 years of experience as an executive. Uh, in her career, she has risen through the, the ranks and is now executive vice president with global responsibilities for Donnelly Financial Solutions uh, Capital Markets Group. Uh, she served on a number of boards and uh, she uh, has a master's degree from Pepperdine University in organizational development. And she has been uh, recognized as one of the most influential women uh, honoree in Silicon Valley and a member of both the Silicon Valley Leadership Group and C200, which is a premier organization for women business leaders. Looking forward to our conversation today with Donette. It's great to, to have Donette joining us. And I, I love your background. We, we talked about that before. I wish I were there. <laughs> <laughs> And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I wish I was there too. It's yeah. in California, and I'm currently in Florida. Okay. But it, I I love the ocean and the the skies and the contrast. So yeah. Great. Absolutely. Well, give us just a little bit of a, an overview of your career, just a little bit of your story. Sure. Absolutely. I'd be happy to. First of all, thank you so much, Mark. It's a pleasure to be to be doing this. Um, so I was born in Jamaica. Uh, I think I shared that with you earlier and um, spent my formative years there and um, 21 years old after completing uh, college there and having uh, a start in my life as a teacher. I went to the University of Technology and I studied business education and taught at a high school for two years. Teaching remains a, a secret passion mm. and frankly i i think that what i do is teach even though it's masked in leading i think leadership is all about teaching so i'm really happy i have that foundation i came to the united states at the age of 21 and then i got thrown into the business world quite by accident just by meeting an amazing team at a company called Merrill Corporation. Mm -hmm. They, the president of the company at the time, Bob Neenhaus, took me under his wings. And that was my, I would say my first example of mentorship. Mm -hmm. Someone who was enrolled in my success, who pretty much introduced me to this business called Financial Services Global Capital Markets. There, prior to that, I had no idea that this even existed. And what he said to me was, I see your potential. You are a leader. And what I'm going to do is make sure that you go and work in every single department in our company and learn everything from the ground up something will stick if you learn everything from the ground up and that's what i did so i worked in customer service i worked in human resources i worked in marketing i worked in production planning i worked in print buying i worked in sales i worked in finance and before you know you know it he was right i began to have a really good understanding of the elements of a business, how you run a business, how you grow a business, how you choose people in your business. And it was just so fascinating. I was like a sponge. Uh, there were some parts I didn't like as much as others, of course, but there were a couple elements that stood out. I loved the idea of influencing and inspiring people. That was a constant. I loved the idea of taking something that was small 
that might even have been problematic and fixing it. I got a kick out of that. And I loved the idea of winning, of just growing a business, of setting a goal, 5 million this year. Let's double it. Okay, it's now 10 million. Let's triple it, you know? And I, I just love that. And then as I grew and obviously made mistakes and, you know, and, and, and all of that, I, it just became clear to me that what he said coincided with what my mom said and what my grandmother said, you're born to be a leader. And I liked this notion of leading because if when you lead, you influence. When you influence, you inspire. When you inspire, you teach. So hopefully that captures it, uh, it it's succinctly enough, but it's sort of how I started. And then I left Merrill on, on the advice of my same mentor and other mentors that came along the way, went to Defin, and I've been at Defin now for over 30 years, wow. if you can believe that. <laughs> and Defin provided the platform just ascending roles in leadership in various capacities to to the role that I now have, which is a global role managing sales. That's the best job in the world, in <laughs> my view, just leading a sales organization because it starts with sales and it ends with sales, you know, and then having the ability to own the PL and influence it and and work with partners in marketing and in finance i just and hr i just absolutely i have the dream job and i, I have the best job in the world i really do well and i appreciate you sharing your background and I, tell me a little bit and i like to ask this question of uh, almost everyone that comes on the uh the podcast uh because we have a lot of new and up and coming leaders knowing what you know now uh, yes. you've had a great career. Uh, what do you wish you would have known when you were 22 and just kind of, you know, getting started? <laughs> what, what advice would you give your, yourself? Oh gosh. When I was 22, oh, to be 22 again. <laughs> right. I'll tell you what, when I was in my twenties and I would even say even in my thirties, I was just this rambunctious person. I was like a, a bull, you know, I would just run and step over people and not deliberately, honestly, but just being so not mindful of people's feelings. And I, at two, in my 20s and 30s, I didn't have that. So if there was one thing I would say that I definitely know now, and I learned it, thankfully, in my 40s, I've actually spoken about it, given a podcast about it. It's this notion of really being mindful of the of respecting others, especially others who've been there before you. You know, the fact that you come in to fix things or the fact that you come in to lead or the fact that you're given additional responsibilities only means that you have an opportunity to build upon what others have started, you know? Sure. So that is the, the big lesson. And, and I say this to people I mentor now, when you go anywhere, invest some time in being a sponge, mm -hmm. literally shutting up, just being a sponge, just watch. If you have to speak, ask questions, ask for information, you know, ask people about their experiences and and start from the point of these people are here because they were here before you you get an opportunity to come so recognize there's a huge value there that doesn't matter how great you are you are building on it and be mindful of it that's what i wish i knew that's great. So is there any advice that you received that looking back on you wish you would have ignored? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, being a, a woman and being a black woman, many of my older, I would say, an older, not necessarily chronological age, 
but folks from a different experience who approach the world of business from a cautious place, you know, would say to you, be careful. Remember, you're a female. Remember, you're black. Mm. Remember, you're in an environment where um, if you screw up, there are going to be consequences. It's easy to get rid of you, to replace you. What that did early on in my career is it made me spend time working harder on trying not to lose, you know what I mean? Instead of saying, well, yes, it's good advice, be careful, but step into who I am, because who I am is a black woman, and it's obvious. And, and there was just a degree of caution that I approached because I was afraid um, that I'm no longer afraid of. And I'm able to use my voice, especially because I am mindful of everyone's dignity, that being black and being a woman, it's okay. It actually is, is a tool used intentionally that could achieve greatness in the world, in the world. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Well, tell me a little bit, you've, you've managed lots of teams, you've built teams, uh, going back to kind of that first uh, leadership role where you took over, maybe you inherited a team. Tell me a little bit about that. What, what do you wish you would have known about uh, managing and leading a, a team? You know, a yes. lot of times people don't have the ability to build the team, but they've inherited a team. Yes, uh, yes absolutely. I, that's a great question. Uh, thank you for asking that. You know, just recently I was reading uh, something from a, a friend of mine. We serve on a board together and he put it this way. He said, remember to be intentional about understanding everyone's perspective on your team. And I, at first I thought, oh my God, I've, I've got a big team. Oh, that's just like, that's just like so much. Isn't it just better if I just tell everyone <laughs> what the goal is, what our intentions are. But you know what? He's absolutely right. I've, I've learned this and, and, and age and wisdom is just so, so precious, you know, and uh, we should just bottle our wisdom or collective wisdom to give to our kids and the generations that are coming up so they don't have to make some of the mistakes we do. Right. Sure. Um, the value of that is when you intentionally seek out every single person on that team, they're people from different backgrounds. There's some people who are introverts. There's some who are extroverts. But when you make sure you are interested in everyone, the nuggets of wisdom and greatness are so important, mm -hmm. you know? And we talk about culture a lot. The culture is really a compilation of everyone on that team, isn't it? And so if there isn't an understanding intentionally of everybody, how do you really know what the culture is? You know, because someone speaks loudly sure. and speaks all the time, you may have an opinion of the culture, but that really isn't the culture. It isn't, you don't have an understanding of it truthfully, unless you have an understanding of everybody on the team. And my boss, Craig Clay, whom I just adore working for, I learned so much from him every day. He has a phrase that I have captured and, and I hope he's going to listen to this and he'll hear it because he, he doesn't get, I don't think he gets, I tell him enough how much I appreciate him. But he always says, you know, it isn't right or wrong. It really is just a, per, a perspective. And, and that's the key. That's the key. It isn't right or wrong. 
it's just someone's perspective and by hearing and understanding and you might just learn something that now adds to your perspective so you can make better decisions so you can hold people more accountable so that you can change your strategies so you can shift as you need yeah. to to be able to achieve your goals well, there's been a lot of uh, shifting that's been taking place in the last uh, 10 months. We talked a little bit mm. about how it's impacted you personally. It's impacted, you know, it's collectively as we're all living kind of the same same experience uh, globally. Uh, yes. What are some things that you've learned during this, uh, the last 10 months and, and managing the team virtually and, and uh, yes. Yes. Talk a little bit about that. Yes, this is um, my God. Who would have thought? You know, I used to live on a plane, mm -hmm. and um, I used to think that getting everywhere was really what was important because that was the only way you were going to get to know your team. One of the key lessons I've learned in the past ten months is that there's a lot. While I'm not devaluing the face to face. But this, like we're doing now, has served us very, very well. It has served me very well. I will tell you, I got promoted to EVP and had global responsibilities in June of mm -hmm. last year. Huh. I am now running a team, leading a team in APAC, in Canada, in EMEA, and I have to tell you, because I've, I've led many, many teams in my career, the richness, the depth, the, dare I say, professional intimacy that I've been able to develop, I've been able to build, has surprised me. Mm -hmm. What we've been able to accomplish in the six months of not being able to be physically in a room together, I I have to say, I mean, time will tell, right? Sure. But right now, I have to tell you, I it, it's an experience that has impressed me so much that I don't think would have been possible otherwise. So that's one thing because it forces you when you're on a Zoom call. You know, you you can't mess around. You're not wasting five hours on flight sure. or, yep. you know, that sort of stuff when you're tired at the hotel and the da, 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 you know, all that noise is what I'm calling it. It's quiet. There's a stillness. There's an attention to the person that's second to none. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I've learned. I tell you another thing that I've learned that has fascinated me. We sell, we sell, we're salespeople, everybody sells. Our world of opportunities are our clients. All of our clients, by and large, were subject to the same condition. Everybody couldn't, no one could travel. Right. Everyone had to shift. And it is it 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 fostered a commonality with our clients that if you're authentic, you, you were able to start the conversation on common grounds. How are you doing, Mark? How are you managing in this time? How's your family? Mm -hmm. You know, how can I help you? Here are some things we're doing at our company. I'd like to share them with you. What are you doing? You know, it's, it's having that deep connection from a place of commonality we were all subject to the same human condition yeah. and um and and i believe i can speak on behalf of my sales team i think a lot of them are surprised at the level of intimacy that they could procure especially since prior to this awful covid mm -hmm. condition um they valued relationships on the ability to meet face to face to go play golf to go have a meal you know to go to a ball game you know what i mean sure. so i learned that i learned i learned what it is to connect more intimately with a person and to learn from it 
you know and then obviously the obvious one is look the ability of a leader to be agile to work in an environment to develop right. a complexity mindset in what i call the vuca world you know when everything is volatile or you don't understand this and you know agility is the competence that every one not just a leader but particularly a leader should really hone that skill because you 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 plan you plan as much as you want you plan tight and you just have to hang loose because you have to shift as as is as is required so i learned that and i learned so many other things i i just i, I learned about reflecting on what is really important because i had time to you know, I play the piano. I have a piano. I mean, I, I was like, I love playing the piano. And I never did because you're so busy shifting. I've rediscovered the joy and the personal gratification of just sitting and being still and playing the piano, you mm. know? So yeah. it's it's just allowed you. I couldn't, can't go out. I love cooking. I have been doing recipes and sharing it with my friends. Simple salads, you know, just sure. adding stuff and making it, you, you know, just the, just an appreciation of nature, just going for a walk, exercising more. It just, I'm working harder, but because I can't go out to go meet you, to have stuff, you know, to have a meal, um, I'm spending that time eating healthier mm -hmm. as an example, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I noticed in your bio that, uh, that you wrote a thesis, uh, on a subject I, I think you're passionate about and that's golf yes. and the relation, uh, between that and, and, uh, life and business and talk a little bit about that. Yes. Especially last year, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. Especially. <laughs> so, I did my my MBA later in life. You know, I raised my son as a single parent and, and got ascending roles and really wanted to do it a long time ago, but got to a point when I said, you know what, I really need to do this. I went to Pepperdine University, cool. And, <laughs> um, and I think Pepperdine has the most beautiful campus in the yeah, world. Yeah, they do. Ever been there. Yep. The first time I went there, I'm like, no, I know why my tuition is so expensive. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Beauty has its price, right? <laughs> so, and, and I'm sorry, that was just a joke. I couldn't resist. <laughs> um, but anyway, an amazing, an amazing school just changed my life. So this program that they had, what attracted me to this program was it's not a it's not one of those MBA programs, you know, where you go 18 months and stuff. It had three components. You had to do a thesis, right? You had to do a final invigilated exam. Reminded me of high school, right? Sure. Yep. And then you had to do all the practicums, which took us all around the world. We spent time in China, mm. in South America, you know, it, it was pretty intense, but amazing just changed my life so when the when the notion of the thesis came up i'm like it's like i, I don't even know what to do my professor said what is it that you love and i said well i love inspiring people i love leading and and she said well what do you love outside of work i said and i love golf she said well think of what you love marry them make that your thesis no one at, at the school of business had ever done anything on golf and leadership. Sure. You know, there is sports and leadership, you know, education, you know, other things, but not golf. And so she said, the purpose of a thesis is really to begin a conversation or to build on a conversation. So it serves as a reference. So I was like, okay. So I decided I was going to talk about golf and I was going to research because I have, have an idea that whatever it is that you need to learn about leadership in a practical way, you will be forced to if you go play around the golf. Now, do you golf, Mark? A little bit, but no. eno enough to, uh, to frustrate okay, myself. Good. Good. So <laughs> you, you go out there, you take yep. lessons, you prepare, 
okay that's what we do we're prepared we go to business school right we have mentors like i did early in my career that's the preparation and then you learn you make mistakes you you go work here you go work there you you know and you grow and you're going to go you learn so you prepare for it and then you get promoted and you're now vice president of sales let's say or vice president of finance you go to play around the golf you take your lessons you know you get your equipment you get your clubs you get fitted you know you know what to do you get the gloves you go out there you didn't know that it was going to rain you get there you get up on the tee it's raining what do you do what do you do you came to play golf right Yep. You go play golf in the rain. So the unexpected occurs. How do you shift your mentality? How do you, what is your attitude towards it when something is not as expected? Mm -hmm. You go to play any round of golf that will show up. It's sunny, it's bright, it's not raining. You go up, you hit your great tee shot. You feel really good about it. You're only about a hundred yards from the pin. You're gonna get, you should get an eagle or a birdie or at worst a par. So you're walking up there, you know, you're chatting with your the people you're playing with and you're feeling good. And then you go up there and you hit a shot and you misjudge just a little bit because you're playing here for the first time and you didn't realize that it's a peat dye designed course and mr dye has has a, had a way he passed away recently of making sure if you don't look behind the pin that your ball is going to roll off mm -hmm. you don't know that so you hit the best pitch shot you have in your bag and you think it's going to go in you miss it and then it rolls off and it goes all the way down there and you're like oh my this birdie or at worst par is now looking like a bogey and then you go there and you're a little frustrated now it gets to you you're thinking i only had 100 yards from there and stuff gets in your head you lose your focus you come back you miss it to go and before you know it you have a triple right that's life it's called the rub of the green does that not sound like what we might happen to us as leaders so that was my idea and then Pepperdine and the amazing staff researchers and stuff that they had formalized it for me so I had to go interview executives who play golf okay that's how a thesis works you know sure. you you have a a hypothesis so I just shared my hypothesis with you and then you got to go prove it see if it's right or not so that was so much fun because I interviewed some folks I knew from my company, other people who were CEOs of the, I interviewed the, the president of um, the California uh, utility company that got themselves in so much trouble, unfortunately, with the blow up that happened there. I interviewed people I didn't know. I interviewed, it, it was wonderful. And then I had to go through the discipline of, you know, well, checking it, what does it say? What sure. does it mean? And, and all of that stuff was really, really hard, but I had help doing that. And then as it turned out, what I have offered now to the, 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 the repertoire of reading is that indeed there is a connection. And, and what I've applied with my friends who are leaders, and it, my, me is, okay, now when I go out there to play golf, what is my intention? And my intention is to learn. Mm -hmm. My intention is to explore. My intention is to have an attitude that whatever comes my way, I have a choice. How do I react to it? just like if an employee shows up and is mad about something i have a choice how do i react to it the attitude around golf is the attitude around leadership and what it gives you take you learn from it and then you apply it so when i mess up on that first hole Okay, I mess up. Am I going to beat up on myself? Am I going to throw my club? 
Am I going to be disruptive to the peers I'm playing with? I can. At the workplace, when things don't go my way, am I going to throw a tantrum? Am I going to be mad at my coworker or my colleague or my boss? You know, the choice is mine. So if my intention on the golf course is to go learn from it, be a sponge and apply it, if I can transfer that when I'm in the office or in my personal relationships, whatever happens, I'm going to absorb, I'm going to learn, and I'm going to apply. If that's my attitude, I'll be a good leader. And I can, and, and, I, and I'm telling you this, I play with a lot of people and I prefer to go out and play with people I don't know because I bring this attitude to the golf course and I'm able to influence and inspire whomever I'm playing with to be able Absolutely. to do that. So that's sort of, I could, you know, I could talk about this forever, right? <laughs> Sounds like a book that you have uh, out of I that know. thesis. You can write that, write that book. Yes, that's my intention <laughs> later in life. Sure. God's willing. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So I know leaders are learners and it uh, sounds like you you have uh, done that throughout your career through mentors as well as uh, mm-hmm. reading, I'm sure. Uh, mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about uh, books that have influenced you and books that you'd, ah, you'd recommend. Ah. See, they're right here. Oh, okay. you can't see them, but I have them here. Nelson Mandela. Mm. The prison letters of Nelson Mandela have influenced me greatly because here's a man who has suffered and the world knows about it, sure. but who has risen from the dungeons of prison and has influenced the world in such an amazing way mm. that I keep it on my desk right here because when I think I'm having a problem, sure. Mark, yep. all, right. all I gotta do is just look at that face. I yep. do not have a problem. Mm-hmm. That's one. It will not surprise you that this book, it's the match. It's, it's the day the game of golf changed forever. It is a, an amazingly written book about a match that was played at my favorite golf course, Cypress Point. Okay. Um, and I just, this book I reread when I was doing my thesis because, and I would encourage you to read it, please, because it's very well written. It's written in a way that once you pick it up, you don't want to put it down. And it literally followed. You could think that you were actually there Mm. with this match with these players. Um, on the business front, I, I read a number of different things as they come out. How We Lead Matters is a book that's easy to read by Marilyn Nelson. Okay. That, that, that is my mantra. Everybody is a leader. There is a leader inside of all of us. How we do it really matters and it really matters mark because if your purpose is to inspire greatness in everyone you're not going to do that if you are not an intentional leader Mm -hmm. so this i recommend um it's an old book that i refer to all the time the one minute manager do you remember that Mm -hmm. one sure absolutely um that i use that I use a lot as well. But I would say if I were to recommend something to a leader, it would be how we lead matters and just biographies, you know, listening and understanding the lives of people. I'm also re- I'm reading right now Andre Agassi's biography, okay. um, the great tennis player. It's very sure. written and just insight into some, some a different sports and a different person and what they learn and how they became great and how their childhood influences that sort of stuff. I think just the life stories of others, you know, any one of those, those books. I'm reading Colin Powell's book. Obviously, I just got Obama's book. I can't wait to delve into it. My sister gave it to me for Christmas. So, you know, folks who are influential, their life stories 
just being able to read that, I think is just so important. I just read Shelley's book. Have okay, you read yeah. Shelley's book? <laughs> yeah, I, a, I have. Absolutely. Ambitious. Yep. That that brought tears to my my yeah. eyes, you know, yeah. because I just thought that was a great, great business book. Yep, absolutely. About about life and intentionality, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the, she uh, introduced us, and uh, she spoke highly of you. And, and uh, yeah, Thank her you. book is definitely one that uh, we recommend uh, people picking up. She's a great storyteller, and absolutely. and has some great uh, lessons to share. Um, talk a little bit about. Uh, kind of what you uh, like to do in your free time. And you've talked a little bit and golf I know is there, but. Yes. Uh, golf is absolutely there. I don't have a lot of free time. And I'll tell you why I don't have a lot of free time. And Shelly taught me this. Some folks have talked about this notion about balance, you know, the work-life sure. balance. Yep. Like Shelly, I, I don't believe in that. I think it's about work-life integration. Mm -hmm. So if you're integrating, uh, you know, it's work life free time integration is how I, I look at it. So I'll tell you what I love to do. I love to read. Obviously, I usually am reading like three, four books at a time just because I, you know, sure. I, I, I want to get a little bit flavor from all of them. Right. So I can speak intelligently about it. I love golfing. So, you know, on the weekends, you know, if every time, even if I don't get to play, I will go practice. So that that is what I do. The other thing I do, I love cooking and um, and I love entertaining. I've not been able to entertain, right. yep. obviously, because of of COVID. But um, but I, I, I like cooking and I don't cook from recipes. I just like put in little things here and there um, to be able to do that. I love movies and particularly I like old, you know, black and white movies. Mm. Uh, and so I, I would, I just love curling up with a book and the movie going on because I'll read a couple here and pages, chapters, I put it down and then I'll watch, you know, the, the old movies. I could watch them over and over and over and over. You know, my favorite movie is 12 Angry Men. I don't know if you know that movie sure. and I, I could watch it. I could watch it weekly. And um, The Eye and the Needle. Do you remember that one? That one I'm trying to recall. Yeah, that one is um, is uh, Sullivan. What's his name? Um, uh, uh, Donald Donald Sutherland. So okay. Donald Sutherland is the star in it. Old, oh, it's just so amazing. So I love doing that, right? And um, I love to exercise. I, you know, I've got my Peloton. My son owns a fitness studio, so he. I've got a number of his classes that I do. So I love to do that. I love to walk, you know, and um, and I love. I love mentoring. So I do spend quite a bit of my time with younger folks, families that I mentor. Um, and I, and I love talking to my family. So I, I, there's no free time, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> it's all integrated. <laughs> So I was going to invite you to come to Minnesota and we could snowshoe together, but, uh, you know, we I have not done that. So I will do it. Yeah, I, I, look, my, I would try my... anything once, you know, <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing that my wife and I have figured out that uh, living in Minnesota, that you have to get outside, figure out something to do, uh, in the wintertime just to, uh, to stay, uh, yes. stay sane. So yeah, oh, absolutely. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So what, what parting advice would you give, uh, a new or up and coming leader? Yeah, a few things. Be curious, be curious. Don't ever be afraid to say no because you hadn't done it before. Mm -hmm. Say yes, just say yes uh, because you'll be, you'll be in for the unknown might just be the treat of your life mm. so so be bold say yes even if you've not been given that opportunity before or you think you don't have experience it's okay um go get it 
one other piece of advice I would give it's it's I have a plaque in my office that an an ex colleague gave to me and the the grammar is not correct. However, the point is it says life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. So the advice I would give if you screw up, it's okay. In fact, have some screw ups because the the advantages of the lessons that you will learn, especially when they're your screw ups, and you should share them with others too, so they don't have the same ones. They can have some of their own that they can share with you. But don't beat up on yourself. Understand it backwards, but live it forwards. That's the advice I would give. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Donette. That's that's uh, that's great advice, and and I, I just uh, appreciate your enthusiasm for life and and all that you're doing. It and, and uh, definitely uh, look forward to to seeing what you do next, and and as you uh, kind of manage your your team globally, and uh, definitely appreciate the opportunity to connect and meet. You're very welcome, Mark, and thank you so much. I consider this such a a, a great honor and a a privilege and, and thank you for spending time and interviewing me. Thank you for listening to the Motivated to Lead podcast. Please subscribe on iTunes. You can also see a video version of this interview at motivatedtolead.com. This podcast is brought to you by SEMA Partners, helping you find your next great leader.